Um, I think we've got everyone up um, downstairs, so I think we're going to plan to kick off now. Um, can I just first start by saying, uh, my, my name's Neil Spence and I'm, I have the pleasure of chairing the Witness Confident Charity, and I've got um, uh, just a very brief introduction to make before I hand over to Guy, who's going to run a demo of the site, and then we're, we're going to get um, questions from the floor. Can I um, first start by just saying thanks to everyone for coming along today and making the time to come to this launch. Uh, I also want to take uh, the opportunity to thank the Witness Confident team, the core team, that have spent um, relentless hours and commitment really getting us to this launch today. Now there's a, there's a, there's a big team, but I, I really want to mention by name three people in particular. That's Guy Dem, who's the director and also the inspiration behind the charity. There's Adam, who's, uh, I have to go, quite a special man who's not only designed the site, but actually managed all the build of it too. And then we've got Dom as well, who keeps everything running so smoothly at the charity. Um, this core team have been supported by, um, obviously, the trustees and numerous advisors and volunteers as well. Um, I'm not going to name check all of those, they're all the paperwork when you pick it up, when you go. Uh, I've got a, a little bit to say about the sort of level of street violence in Britain. It's very high at the moment, it's over a million cases uh, in England and Wales. And half of these street robberies happen in London. Um, the Met Police have a low success rate in solving street violence, some 16%. This is largely due to the fact that we need to identify the offender. Um, and witness appeal boards now are no longer used in incidents of street violence. Um, all of this has helped uh, fuel a public fear uh, that is in fact seven times greater than the actual risk. Um, <coughs> at Witness Confident, we believe that the level of, of, fear, and, of street, uh, fear and street violence itself won't be reduced without finding new ways to increase public involvement. Um, we, need to, we need more witnesses to have the confidence to come forward. So, a group of us in 2009 <coughs> decided to do something about it and we set up the, uh, the charity Witness Confident and uh, it's one of the reasons that we're here today. I mean today is the launch of probably our, our first big initiative which is streetviolence.org. It's an easy to use interactive service specifically designed for witnesses and victims to easily and efficiently engage with the system. Um, the best way to, to understand what that's about is, is to actually see, and in a minute I'm just going to hand over to Guy and he's going to walk you through the site and give you a demo of it. The final thing I wanted to say though is we're a very small charity. We haven't got inexhaustible funds. Um, we haven't got enough money to go out and do a big advertising campaign or anything. So can I ask you, when you leave today, if you can tell 10 people and ask them to tell 10 people <coughs> more about this initiative, I think it'll give us an opportunity to get some real momentum behind us. So that's all I've got to say at the moment. I'll be able to sit up here for questions at the end, and we've got trustees within the audience as well. And I'm going to hand over to Guy to actually take you through a demo. Um, well, uh, thank you very much, Neil. Um, thank you all for coming. Uh, I'd just like to start by uh, reiterating um, uh, my thanks to my colleagues, uh, particularly Adam, who uh, built the site. Uh, Don and Martin who did the coding uh, behind it. I'd like to thank the trustees for so skillfully getting this vessel to the slipway <coughs> and I'd like to thank the funders without whom we wouldn't be here. Uh, the reason that I'm speaking to you is that I'm the least bashful of the team of Witness Company. Uh, I'm really not someone on the bridge of the ship, I'm actually someone from the engine and I've come out over the weekend and looked around the ship and I can say it's got a lovely finish, it's been really beautifully designed and it's been very well built. Whether we, victims or witnesses, have plain sailing ahead or choppy waters, this site, this service, will enable them to engage with the police better <coughs> and thereby to reduce violent crime in London to begin with and soon across the country. So I'm going to take you through the site very quickly and then we're going to put this to uh, comments uh, and questions from the floor. So streetviolence.org is about reporting, it's about warning 
and it's about witness appeals. In many ways, it's a modern take on the old witness appeal board that Neil said is no longer used in London. What you're able to do is victims can report street violence to the police on the site, they can appeal for witnesses, they can thank passers-by who helped, they can warn the public and their neighbours, they're able to respond securely online to the police, and they can also track arrests and results. And that means <coughs> that people can see the progress and the results of the good work that the police take. Now to start with, and as Neil said, we're a small charity, this service is going to be available from midnight tonight across London. Our hope is that if it works in improving public engagement and in reducing crime, that it will be extended elsewhere in the country. And so people who live outside of London are able just to click there and, uh, and then they'll be able to indicate. Should we just go back, Don, to the... So this is the site. Now what I want to start with is from the position of a witness and how the site helps you here. Let's imagine that you're driving through <coughs> East London along Commercial Road. It's about 10 o'clock at night and you've just passed Limehouse uh, Docklands Railway Station. You've stopped at the lights and you see a nasty altercation between two people. And you watch as a tall, well-tanned, thick-set man wearing a Premier League football shirt pushes a smaller North African man violently. You're not sure how serious it is. And anyway, you need to get home because the babysitter is leaving at 10.15 and you don't want to get out and intervene yourself. The next day, you're wondering what happened, whether it was serious, whether anything became of it. So you go on streetviolence.org and you zoom in to the area around Commercial Road. And here we are, there's Commercial Road. And you can see here, if you could click on the pin on. And here is a post. This has been expressed by the victim, and what we hope is that the police or police <coughs> officers will help victims when they report the crime to make these posts and will advise them of this. But even if the police don't, the victim is able to do this themselves. So it reads, I was assaulted here in a stranger attack in a street on Wednesday the 25th. I needed medical attention, a weapon was used, I'm a male of Arab or North African appearance, the suspect was a male of mixed race if you have any information, please contact the police. Well, that looks like, and you can tell from here, that, and here's Limehouse Rail, that it does look like that's the incident you saw. It's the correct time. You can help the police. So let's just click on that button there. And if we can just go up. It's a simple form here. I believe I have information, or indeed, if you have a, used your mobile phone, you took a photograph, that's helpful. You can click on those. You can fill in your information here, saying what it was you saw, and leaving contact details. And then if you scroll down, Don, you have to put in your email, just check that, so excuse that, and you confirm that the information is correct to the best of your belief, that the police can contact you using the details on the form, and that you're agreeing you're not misusing the service. You press that, and then that information goes to the local safer neighborhood team for them to forward to the investigating officer. This will happen instantaneously. Can we please go back from that? Now let's separately imagine, so the police then have, the witness makes contact with the police very simply. Uh, the witness does not have to hang around at the scene. The witness does not have to wait around in a, in a call centre, nor does the witness have to go down to the police station and stand around. They give the police their contact details, and then it's the job of the police to get in touch with the witness. It's a hassle-free process. Let's imagine quite separately that another person lives near Limehouse and goes on the site and sees that there's been an incident there. 
And can we just click on this, which is more information? Even though the police don't use witness appeal boards, they do very occasionally put out emails and photo fit pictures of suspects they're looking for. So this is an example where they've done this. Uh, this describes the incident, and there is a photo. Now, in this example, what might happen is the member of the public has gone on the site, sees the photograph, and recognises, let's say, recognises that individual as someone who he's frequently <coughs> seen in a betting shop in Commercial Road. Again, he's in a position either to contact the police through the numbers they put here on, on their appeal, or indeed going back through the site on the contact the police form that we just looked at. So it's a very simple process for members of the public to engage with the police and help the police. And what we know from the result of the London riots was that when the police uh, ask the public to help and make it easy for the public to help, they will help. And what we're saying is that same, those same lessons can be applied to reduce street violence in the capital. Now, so that's the position of a witness or a member of the public who can help. Let's just look at the site from the point of view of a member of the public. And let's imagine, I apologise to people who live in East London, I'm just going to use examples from East London. Let's imagine that uh, you live just off Barking Park, and you see a post on the site near your house. And you look on, and you click on it. And this says, I was assaulted here, but not in a stranger attack. On Wednesday the 15th of February at 3 o'clock in the morning, I needed medical attention. I'm a male youth of white European appearance. The suspect was a male youth of white European appearance. If you have any information, please contact the police. I should repeat, actually, what it says here. These are test markers. From tomorrow, you will see real live markers there. Now, the important thing, the member of the public who's looking here the information they're given is actually really helpful information. This was a stranger attack, which might be a cause for concern, but it happened at three o'clock in the morning. It happened between two white males, and it may well be that, they, that, that the member of the public will conclude, if they're this, like me and they're half <coughs> asleep at three o'clock in the morning, that this incident is not a cause for concern to them or their family, who are asleep at three o'clock in the morning. So in this example, they have sufficient information to know that it was not a cause for concern. Now, what I'd like to do is take you to the official crime map that is uh, used at the moment. And can we just zone in on, on that picture, Don? <coughs> is it possible to double click so we get the whole of... If you zoom out a bit more, that's fine, a bit more, thank you. So at the moment, what the official crime map, and I, I've got to emphasise, our service can only operate through the official crime map. So we're indebted to the official crime map. But what the crime map does is it shows a whole range of crimes. Uh, and on this case, what we're doing is just showing in this area violence. And you can see here that there are a series of violent crimes all <coughs> around the area. One of the things about violent crimes, that the, the way the crime map works, is that the police have to put on all violent crimes. They don't distinguish stranger attacks from domestic <coughs> violence or from fights in school playgrounds. So all of these appear. And someone who lives here may, may think, Oh my God, in this last month, there have been two attacks there, one attack there, one attack there, one attack there, and they may be worried. So let's just click on one of these pins to see what information <coughs> there is. This is the information. It doesn't say what time it happened. It doesn't say when it happened. It doesn't say who was involved. And for data protection reasons, because this can include domestic violence, it doesn't locate the incident in the correct place. So there's a big qualitative difference between the information that is available on the official government crime map 
and that that will now be available to members of the public from tomorrow. Now, what I need to say is that when David Cameron, before he was Prime Minister, launched the initiative uh, that there should be crime maps and that they would help the police and that they would end the frustration that the public face, he and Mr Johnson, the Mayor, said that crime maps would show when the incident happened, where it happened, and who was involved. And by doing that, it would help the police do their job. Now, as I've explained, the, the official crime map is a very good tool in providing information to the public, but it does not promote engagement between the public and the police, and that is what uh, streetviolence.org does. Can I give you one other example of the benefits of uh, this approach, that, or how we see the benefits? Let's imagine that my sister lives near Elton Palace in um, South London and has two teenager, two, two teenage daughters. She sees a post just very near where she lives and clicks on that. And this says, I was assaulted in a stranger attack in a park or open space on the, on the, on the state at 4.15. I'm a female youth of dark European appearance. The suspect was a female youth of white European appearance. Thanks to the people who helped. This is an important thing. This site allows victims to thank members of the public who helped. This site will start breaking this false perception about a walk-on-by culture that everyone turns their back. Now, in this case, that my notional sister is worried about this post. She's worried because her daughter walks to school on this very road that this incident happened at 4.15 on a weekday. It's clearly relevant and a cause for concern. Now, from this information, she has uh, two options. She can see that, she can see where it happened and when it happened. What she's able to do is contact the head teacher at the school and say, does he or she know anything about the incident? It may be the head teacher does, many, many cases they will, and they may be able to reassure the parent that this was a girl fight which did not lead to any serious incident and uh, that the school does not think it's a cause for concern. If for whatever reason the parent doesn't want to ask the school, they can click on this button and, can we just go up Ron? Uh, they can click here, I cannot help but I would like reassurance as I'm concerned that this particular incident poses a risk to me or my family. So again here, we have a very simple process by which members of the public are given the information they are entitled to expect about their safety and the safety of their family, and then if they need reassurance, they can do this very swiftly. Can we please show now how uh, a victim will make a post? So can I just quickly go back at the top here? This is you can search by putting in the, the, the location, the place, or the postcode. And indeed, if there is an incident you've reported, you can put in a particular reference number. You can change the view period up here. So if you only want to look for ones in the last week, you can do that very easily. And you can also change the view so you only see cases that have been reported to the police, or only those, or all of them. So let me just emphasize again, can we go back to all, that an amber one means the police have not yet been formally notified and are not investigating it. A red one means the police are investigating it. If it has an A on it, it means a suspect has been arrested. And if it has an R on it, it means the, the police have got a conviction or the case is closed. So let's make a post on can we just show someone unfortunately who's been robbed or mugged or um, or attacked in somewhere, let's say here near Imperial College. So they place it where the incident happened. Just move it around a bit to show how accurate it can be. You can pinpoint accuracy and then you confirm there. This process takes, as I think, I hope I can show you, takes really little more than a couple of minutes. 
explains, first of all, what the form is about. The form is about communicating to the police or warning members of the public. If we track down here, very quickly, these drop-down menus, where it was, when it was, who the suspect <coughs> was, who you are. You're also asked to say whether it was a robbery, whether you needed help, whether a weapon was used, whether passers-by helped, and whether it was a stranger attack. In other words, it was somewhere where you did not know or recognise the identity of your attackers. You're also asked, can we just click here, if you've reported to the police. If you have, you're asked here to supply the crime reference number, which makes it a terribly easy process for the police so that they, will, that they will know exactly which file, which case it is, and the officer's name. And then you're asked to put in, which you will have already given the police, your name, your phone number, and your email address to make it absolutely secure and safe for the police to contact you. Let's just go back and imagine that you <coughs> haven't reported it. You have two options. I'm going to take this one first. I do not want to formally report this now, and so will provi not provide any contact details. If the police want to, want to contact me, they can ask witness confidence to forward me an email to the account that you use to validate the process, the, the, the post. What this means is that someone who perhaps because in his own experience or his dealings uh, of his family, or even the community that he comes from, is reluctant to deal with the police or reluctant to be seen to deal with the police, they are able to post the matter on the map and thereby warn them to the public. And it means that if the police want to come back to them, they can do that safely through us. We will forward an email. So to give an example, if someone reports an incident happening on a bus, which they don't think is that serious, that their phone was nicked, or they were threatened to do that, they don't want to formally report it, they can post it on the map to warn members of the public. If what then happens, the police <coughs> realise that on that same bus, a very nasty incident happened half an hour later, and it looks like it was the same suspect, the police can write an email to the victim explaining why it's important that they contact them, and then we, witness confident, will forward <coughs> that email to the police. <coughs> The other option is this, that you can formally report, it says I would like to formally report the crime and ask the police to contact me using these details. Now, what I have to say is we've worked on this uh, uh, initiative for two years with the Metropolitan Police and I'm extremely grateful to them for the support and assistance they've given us. Metro, Metropolitan Police is a very large organisation, and like any very large organisation, its ability to move swiftly can be limited. Uh, a lot of its um, uh, uh, <coughs> commitment, I don't doubt its commitment to want to engage the public and reduce street crime, it is ambivalent about this site now. We have only just learned that, having worked with them for two years, this weekend, late on Friday evening, they emailed us to say that, uh, to make this point, uh, street crime is taken very seriously by the Metropolitan Police Service, and in order to reduce street crime and catch offenders, the Metropolitan Police Service urges victims to contact the police in the quickest way possible by calling 999 or speaking to an officer on patrol nearby. We do not facilitate the online reporting of street crime through the MPS website or any third party website due to the seriousness of street crime and delaying the reporting of such an incident can reduce investigative opportunities. We want to make it clear to members of the public that that is the advice of the police. Now, at the moment, the Home Office estimates that over 50% of street violence is not reported. And we believe that one of the reasons is because it's too much of a hassle or people are reluctant to engage with the police. And we think that they need to be offered a new opportunity, a new way to engage with the police. We certainly do not see how such a development is a bad idea. Members of the public who are attacked on the street or robbed obviously 
and there and then phone 999 and this is very solid advice. But in many cases they don't or they won't. And for those people, this site, this service, offers a new useful tool. Now, that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to say just a couple of wrap-up things, and then we'd like to put this to the floor for comments and questions. The message I've got to um, you and to members of the public is please use the site. If you're a victim, and I'm very sorry, and I very much hope you won't be, but if you or your family are a victim of street violence, please report it. Please use the site to warn others about it. If you're a witness, the police cannot effectively or efficiently catch those responsible, solve the crime, or deter street violence if people who witness it will not speak up. This site enables witnesses to contact the police very easily, and I ask you, if you do witness street violence, visit the site and use it. If you're a concerned citizen, please check the site out. Though street violence is a problem, and a real problem, it is unacceptable that the public's fear of street violence is seven times greater than the risk. And something has to be done to reassure the public, and that can only be done by giving them meaningful information. As Neil said at the end of his speech, we are a small charity, and I ask you and other members of the public to not just use the site, but to tell other people about it. If you tell 10 people about it, and you ask them to tell 10 people about it, this site will make a difference. It will help the police to reduce street violence, and it will help to reduce the fear of street violence. Thank you very much. So I think we're just going to, if anyone's got any questions or uh, queries, I think we're just opening the floor to any of those now. I'd like to just kick off. Uh, I'm Jane Atkinson from DQ, and I just want to say fantastic. I, I'm just uh, so delighted to, uh, uh, to see this. We first met at an antisocial behaviour conference uh, a couple of years ago, and this was just very much in the beginning stages. And uh, what DQ has been doing for a few years has been providing uh, us, the public, with the skills on how to intervene when we see uh, something happening. I mean, again and again, we hear. Uh, we, none of us want to walk on by, we all want to do something, but most of us are frightened, we don't know what to do in between keeping our heads down, uh, um, uh, sending all the wrong messages, doing nothing, or rushing in and, 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 and getting harmed. And what we've been doing at Defuse, again working with the Met Police, is trying to um, uh, defuse the skills, def uh, spread the skills on how we can intervene in, 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 in these sorts of situations. And one of the things again and again uh, we hear is, uh, we just don't know what what we can do in between doing nothing. We can give people the skills, actually, how to defuse confrontation. But actually, when they see something happening where it's really too dangerous, or they fear it's too dangerous to intervene, what can they do? And this is just absolutely fantastic. I can just see how, uh, certainly through the, 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 the skills training that we run, this sort of thing will be just, you know, it's the sort of one definite tool that's been lacking. So, you know, I just want to congratulate you. It's fantastic. Well, I mean, thank you very much, uh, Jane. I mean, can I say that uh, reciprocate? I mean, what Diffuse is doing is uh, equally important in uh, helping make our streets safer. And if I can pick up on one point uh, you made from uh, your experience dealing with members of the public and their wish to do something, we did a pilot of this in uh, Hackney and Islington last summer. And uh, the we did a it was a very sort of humble or low low scale pilot and we went out on the, on the streets doing some direct marketing and I have to say the experience that I had and my colleagues had was something approaching a yearn by members of the public to be able to do something to help. 
their enthusiasm for this site knew no bounds. So we definitely have a situation where the public do want to help. And the result, the response, because obviously this is all using new technology. And one people I haven't thanked is uh, I do want to thank the, the as I said, the uh, government and the, the, the for the um, the way they are now using and making available public data. Uh, and I want to thank Google who make this information available to the public. And I'm very pleased to say that Google are actually putting this on the home page of Google Earth tomorrow around the world because they view this as exactly the sort of initiative uh, police forces should be uh, adopting uh, using new technology. But so using the new technology on the on the pilot, we found that the response rate from members of the public to the marketing campaign was between 12 and 19%. <coughs> when we went to the, the uh, marketing <coughs> industry and we asked them what was a good response rate for a direct marketing campaign, they said a successful campaign is one where you get between 1 and 4%. <laughs> so this shows that the people of London are very keen to help the police. The issue for the police is how much they are willing to facilitate <coughs> and stimulate that help. Thank you very much, Clive, for inviting us. Uh, Reverend Coulter and myself, as you know, we are from Rito House, Hackney, and uh, we appreciate your efforts in this direction. The question I would like to ask you, whether uh, this service will require some kind of training for people who are not uh, expert in the use of the computers. Well, that's a very good point, um, uh, a, a very good point indeed. And we were anxious about this. And during the pilot, we uh, asked people, because it, obviously it wasn't just it was school children, it was adults, it was elderly people, it was people from all, uh, all communities. And to give an example, at the North London Muslim Centre, when uh, they saw the pilot, they thought it would be wonderful. It would encourage those people from their community who are reluctant to engage with the police to be able to engage with the police 24-7 from the convenience of their home. And one of the things that uh, I asked them about the language, because this is only available in English, and I asked them about the use of computers. And they said two things. Firstly, that most members of their community have children or grandchildren who are completely fluent in English and are also completely adept and love using computers. And they thought that this would be something where a grandparent or parent would ask their child and they would then, the child would be able to help their father or grandfather use the site it would stimulate a discussion about the risks of street violence in the past when they were growing up to when, when uh, the child is now. And it would be a very healthy and positive thing for the family. Um, additionally, Witness Confident is a legal advice centre and we will be offering free help uh, over the phone for people who are unable to use this site and we will also be going out at times around the community uh, with laptops uh, in places like a Predo house, in parts of Hackney where members of the public are maybe not, don't have ready access to the uh, internet, and we will be providing the service sitting there in shop fronts like your own shop front and trying to make sure that this is a service that is available to everyone in London. I just add, just be, I just add to that. It's a very small team that have developed the site, and I have to say it's quite amazing what they've achieved in in the period of time they have. I, I run a company that builds this sort of stuff all the time, and literally I probably <coughs> have twenty times the amount of people on it. So I think we've taken most of the best practice we can from other similar interactive sites where we're getting people to sort of get involved with things and applied those. So hopefully we've done as much as we can on that. Gentlemen in the back. Uh, I'm Stephen Lott, Deputy Chair of Consumer Focus. Um, I'm very interested in all this. I think it's a, a tremendous development, and uh, it seems to me to work with the grain. I'm thinking particularly of uh, 
uh, how uh, consumers and citizens would interact with, with many other public services, particularly local council ones, where there are similar methods now of recording things on maps and then tracking from the map how, thing, how particular things are going. I, I think we have a particular interest in this because at Consumer Focus we did some uh, qualitative market research work about a year ago on people's interactions with the police, particularly in the context of complaints, but also looking more generally. And that found a lot of frustration with um, the police losing records, with the police use of IT, with, which was you know, rudimentary in quite a lot of cases, so, uh, uh, all non-existent. Um, and also a, a feeling of frustration that when people do interact with the police, even in the interest of helping them, um, it doesn't actually do any good. Um, so I think, this, I think this is a way of making people feel, as, as, the, as, the, as the statement said, more confident. And, uh, and I think making it... Uh, um, easier for, for those at the other end to handle it, and uh, consumers recognise that too. My question is this, it's about the uh, reaction from the, the Metropolitan Police. Um, um, and I noticed the Met's email, um, which, you, which you put up there, talks about victims, mm -hmm. whereas the web, website talks about witnesses. And I wonder if there's a difference there, that actually, in quite a lot of circumstances, the message to victims should in, be, indeed be call 999. But the message to witness, witnesses may be much more variable because there are plenty of circumstances where witnesses may have seen something that looks a bit incidental that's not really worth troubling somebody with, which you're pretty confident <coughs> when you ring up the, the police station and get lost on a scrap of paper anyway. Um, and as a result, it's probably not worth it. Whereas in this particular context, it would be worth it. And I wonder if there's some, some mileage for negotiation there about that distinction. Thank you, guys. Just going to go. Um, uh, thank you very much, and I'm very grateful that uh, Consumer Focus for lending its uh, uh, enthusiastic and important support to, to this. Um, one of the points made was about the public's fear, or the witnesses' fear, that the police lose evidence. Uh, and this is a fear, that I, I don't believe it happens very often. It is a fear that the police recognise, and it was one of the reasons that two years ago, when we started the initiative, they said they, what, they were keen to support it because it would reduce the risk that people feared uh, their evidence would be lost. Because it is new technology, it is incredibly efficient. An email with the email contact with a record of, uh, is available for the police. They will not lose it. It is very different from someone writing down a phone number by hand, perhaps losing a digit and not being able to contact the person. So that is very important. The second thing, which I, I think I'm very grateful to you for pointing out, the concern that the police raised this weekend is about victims using the site to report when they would be better off phoning 999. There is no difference between us and the police on that. And anybody who is badly injured or feels they ought to phone 999, should phone 999, report the incident. When they have reported it, they are then able to post it on this site and warn other people. It is additional, not replacing that very important role the police play. But as you say, the driving force of this site is to galvanise witness engagement. And at the moment, sadly, the police do not stimulate or facilitate the engagement by witnesses. This site is the <coughs> only show in town, and we call on the, Metro, the Metropolitan Police <coughs> to support the site on this basis. And to give an example of this, is from another area, but uh, um, on Tuesday, the police launched a, a very important campaign, <coughs> a counter-terrorism campaign, and I don't wish to understate the importance of this, particularly with the Olympics coming. But I want to preface that before I tell you what the police campaign is based on, by saying that for most Londoners, the actual risk and the real fear <coughs> of street violence is much greater than that of terrorism. Last year, 36,000 people reported to the police that they had been robbed last year. As I said, that as many will not report. We're talking about very large numbers. And in dealing with terrorism, the message that the police put out on Tuesday 
is we fully understand that people may be reluctant to tell the police about suspicious activity or behaviour. We would rather take lots of calls which are made in good faith but have innocent explanations rather than not getting any at all. Not making that call could mean we miss out on a vital piece of information. What we are asking the police to do is to <coughs> afford Londoners the same facility, the same commitment to tackle street violence as they are, as we welcome, that they are now taking to reduce the risk of terrorism. Uh, my name is Adam Raphael. I'm a freelance journalist. I used to work for The Economist, The Guardian, and um, mm -hmm. um, The question I have for Guy is this. Is that the form in which people are describing on the editor state, uh, the witness statements <coughs> there, and it's very much in a sort of police-type language. That's not the language that ordinary people are going to mm -hmm. use. And in fact, they may ramble on quite inconsequentially because they won't know how to put it in that form. Is there going to be any editing process to whittle down the sort of statements that ordinary people will make uh, into sort of a coherent narrative? Well, the answer to that is actually no, and I'll explain very briefly why. The form is to establish <coughs> that contact between the victim and the police, or the witness and the police. Obviously, they need to give a uh, to talk to the police properly, and this is facilitating that contact. The reason that the form uses these drop-down menus is for data protection reasons, so that it's not possible uh, for me or indeed anyone else to to say, um, you know, it was that rotten man Neil Spencer who did it. That is not something that can be posted on the site. This site has been signed off by the data protection, uh, uh, um, uh, the information commissioner who's responsible for data protection, and it has the same level of security as British Telecom or Centrica or British Gas. So it's a very secure service which allows that initial contact to be made. And the use of these, the, the, the drop down menu is to keep the information simple, pertinent, and to ensure that it can be uh, used both by the police and put on the site without compromising the privacy of any individual. Yeah. Yeah, Ian Harvey, Neil, um, we've heard about uh, the lack of enthusiasm from one official source. Um, have you got any information about anything, any, anybody in public life who perhaps does support this? Um, well, thank you for that. Um, I am pleased we had a... Um, uh, there are statements of support on our <coughs> website, and uh, I'm very delighted that we've had um, a strong statement of support from Victim Support, which is the major national charity uh, <laughs> providing help to every victim uh, who reports to the police, and also the charity that runs the witness service for those members of the public who do end up going to court. Uh, they have given a very strong support statement in support saying how important it is that there is a new service like this which will galvanise witnesses to come forward, making the simple point that unless witnesses come forward, there will be more victims. The other um, uh, statement of support I'd like to refer to at this stage is that from the Deputy Mayor of London, Mr Kit Malthouse. He is effectively the first police and crime commissioner in the UK. These are posts that are going to be elected later this year uh, across England and Wales. And he wrote to us last week, welcoming this initiative, uh, that the, um, his full statement, if you, well, his full statement is here, if you, oh, come on. No. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it's not his full statement, it's an extract. I'm wholeheartedly committed to reducing violent crime on London streets. It is my job to ensure that the police, with partners, are working tirelessly to catch and apprehend those responsible. The impact on victims, as I'm sure you will testify, is immense. I wish you well and hope that streetviolence.org progresses in its aim to encourage greater online reporting and facilitating greater information sharing amongst victims, witnesses and the police. 
So I observe there that there really is a tension between the, our first police and crime commissioner and the practitioners, the police themselves, about online reporting. And I suspect that this tension, which has just surfaced this weekend, if it's not resolved by Mr. Morehouse and the Metro Police, that we will see this becoming one of these testing grounds across the country as people stand and are elected to be the first police and crime commissioners in their areas. Because the way the police stimulate, facilitate and encourage, and encourage the engagement of victims and witnesses is going to be key to the success of this initiative. Teacher at Hunger School and Children's Centre. We've been very fortunate to have uh, Witness Confidence work with us um, uh, for a, a, a while now. Um, uh, partly, we think that it's really important that uh, that our children uh, get are empowered to have confidence in their own community. Um, and the issue you were saying about helping um, uh, parents and, and people that aren't familiar with computers, I think, is absolutely the key to get in and, and be able to. Uh, so they can report the information. If they um, if they feel that they're in control, they are they grow in confidence. And this is the, the the big issue that we have is that our children and our community generally doesn't have a great deal of confidence, um, and that's because they feel that they can't make a difference. Anything that provides a way of making a difference by by getting the police to take an interest to show that whatever you, what you do actually has a payback can only be of benefit. Um, well, I'm, I'm very grateful to that, and I, I agree. And can I observe, I mean, we've been very fortunate, apart from this initiative, we've done work in primary schools about the risk, of, uh, uh, the risk and experiences and fears about street violence. And one of the schools we uh, went to was Hungerford, of which uh, Brian is the head teacher. And um, you know, when you go along and you talk to a group of 10 or 11 year olds, you sort of think you know it all. And uh, um, they, um, uh, they have, uh, uh, you know, they, street violence is something they experience, they witness. It is something they fear. But, you know, things which, for the Metro Police, for the criminal justice system, for us old people, which we make very complicated anonymous information, um, uh, who you should tell first of all, whatever. When you sit and listen to 10 and 11 year olds, they, they're, they're wise. They are wiser and more practical than we are. And they've got the answers. And if, as a country, we are to move forward and reduce the level of street violence, we need to engage with and give confidence to the coming generation. We also need to embrace the tools that they use day in, day out, which is what this site does. Do we have any more? I'm David Kenyon from Victim Sport. I'm very happy to be here, very happy to be supportive of this. Um, how are we going to get an idea of, of success? Um, I think that's going to be to be crucial, particularly if we if we're going to be looking at a, a national rollout, particularly given the tension that may exist at the moment between the operational uh, focus from the from the Met and the more dare one say it uh, strategic um, uh, imperatives that the um, deputy mayor may have. How will we actually start to measure? whether this site is being successful, both engaging with people to use it and then having uh, an impact, not just in the criminal justice arena, but, but, but societally as well. My God, you guys ask good questions. Uh, I am grateful. Um, the, and, and again, to repeat our thanks to uh, victim support and uh, uh, its colleagues there for all the good work they do. Um, this is a very important point. The first thing, and, and the question is, is about, 
uh, how we know whether this is making progress. Well, the first thing I've got to say is unless the police want to engage with the public and do engage with the public, the prospects of success are not great. That's the first thing. So this is a plea to the commissioner, Bernard Hogan Howe, and to his chief officers to get behind this and to engage with the public and allow the public to engage with them. That's the first point. The second is that this site, in a sense, records its own success. Members of the public, local journalists, will be able to look at this site and see, can we just go back to the, uh, we'll be able to look at uh, posts, whether they are reported or unreported, what happened in that area. They're able to see what's going on, and indeed it's not just the journalists, it's much more important, it's the public themselves, so they will be able to see. The second thing is that we are able, and this is something I think probably for the first time in terms of uh, people who witness crime and victims, whether they report or not, we will be able to request feedback from them about their experiences using the site and indeed their experiences with the criminal justice system. And we will be asking victims, witnesses, members of the public who sought reassurance and police officers to let us know what they think. So there's a very, very useful tool here, which we will learn from, and we will obviously want to share those results with the police and the public. <coughs> Any more gentlemen, Matt? Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Yusuf Rao. I mean, I'm not affiliated with anybody, just a normal member of the public, and I think this uh, website's absolutely amazing um, in terms of for example, if something were to happen, there's so many people that see so many things and you've eliminated pretty much, like for example, before they'd have to like to go to the police station or phone, you know, wait there in the queue or wait there with the victim or, and as everybody probably agrees with me, London's just a very fast moving place and nobody's got time to wait around for anybody. But with this, with this um, website that you've got going on, it's basically it's cut all that out, you've got um, you could do it in your own time, you could do it whenever, you can actually check up on progress, which is good. And it's got the, the anonymity feel factor to it as well, which is really, really good. Especially like from, from my community and things like that, where there's a lot of Asian people, unfortunately. They're getting you know, tarnished with the wrong brushes and whatever else. And, and now there's, there's, there's none of that, which is absolutely brilliant. I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful, and it, it is important I'm <coughs> that it's important that it's used across London. Um, and I think the point you make that in overcoming all the hassle factor in this fabulous, fast-moving, great city of ours, that this site allowing people in their time, 24/7, to engage with the police, to be a member of their community, to make the community safer. That's what this site is about. That's why it's going to make a difference. Oh, so, one more, if I may. Um, it's great having Kit Malthouse's support for this, but um, have you considered writing directly to all of the mayoral candidates for the, for the Greater London <coughs> Centre? Uh, uh, yes, we have. And um, what, <coughs> what we made the point today is we've asked them if they are making statements in support that those should be embargoed mm. for, till tomorrow. And we've also stressed that this is a non-party political initiative. <coughs> but so it may well be, it's a matter for them, but it may well be that tomorrow you will see support from one or more of the mayoral candidates. Morning everyone, my name's Alan Thompson, um, recently retired from the Metropolitan Police, but uh, I met Guy about two or three years ago uh, in my role that I had within the police. Um, and really, we, what we were talking about was that we had a witness appeal board that went on the pavement. How did we move forward from there? And uh, that's what we come up to today. During that time, uh, we've had the opportunity to try and test things out a little bit. Um, there are obviously some things that remain unresolved. Um, and you heard talk this morning about perhaps tension between strategic objectives and operational aspects. And I can't really talk about those. But what I can say is that there was definitely an appetite 
from those officers that actually tried to catch these people um, in their dealings with what we could test and their enthusiasm to try and use this. Uh, and what they saw was the results they were initially getting back. It was relatively short-lived because there are issues around data protection uh, and, and related things and legal issues which possibly still need to be resolved. But certainly from my experience, there was a lot of enthusiasm from the officers for <coughs> I hope in the future we can see that kind of fruition. Thank you very much, and thank you for your help. And I, that's a terribly important thing to say, that the anxiety or ambivalence that the Met have at the moment is at a senior level. On the ground, as Alan testifies, <coughs> their support was uh, enthusiastic and strong. And I've just received, sorry to do this, because I'm not particularly good at new technology, but I've just actually <laughs> received a message from someone called Elizabeth in Hat and it says, having witnessed a street murder in Hackney, I made the 999 call, giving all my details. However, the police lost me in their system, and I was not contacted for nearly two days. Any system which makes the traumatic experience of being a responsible witness easier and encourages people to report street crime has my full support. It is too easy to be fearful about speaking, of speaking up about violence and this leads directly to street crime escalating within their communities. And I asked the Met to consider this sort of statement from members of the public. And I asked the Met to put their weight and the support and goodwill of their officers behind this initiative. Gentlemen at back. Sorry, come to the officer. Uh, Charles Meadow of Public Interest Research Centre. You mentioned in the briefing um, that funding from Nuffield, Allen Lane and Waits Foundations will allow you to um, operate the service across London free of charge for a year. Um, I mean, obviously, I hope that you do get the funding you need for such an important initiative, but could you clarify, I mean, is there any intention to have this as a paid-for service in future? Um, one of the reasons that the Met are legitimate in saying not jumping fully is there is nothing like this in the world. They perfectly <coughs> correctly want to see how well it works. And the charity has said, enabled by its enlightened funders, that we commit to providing the service out of our funds for the first year. Can we just close that down? Um, the, but what we are doing, I have to say, it enables us to do it, but we are asking members of the public if they want to support us to make uh, a, a donation and give support. And it is only through such support that we will be able to ensure members of the public who witness street violence are aware of this service. That is the huge obstacle we have. Unless the media run with this, unless the police pick it up and, and decide to promote and market this service to Londoners, it will be difficult for witnesses to know it exists. So we are asking people to help there. It also means if we do get support, we'll be able to brief people beyond London on the value of the new service and how it's operating, and that will be important if we can extend it uh, beyond the capital. Sorry, Charles, you asked one other question? Well, oh, will it be a paid for service? Uh, it will always be free for members of the public, but our approach is that um, while it's correct for us to use what limited charitable funds we have to run the service for free for a year, if beyond that it is shown to help the police catch violent criminals, if it's shown to help the police deter violent crime, if it is shown to improve public engagement with and public confidence in the police, and if it is shown to reduce fear of street violence, if any of those it is shown, then it is our view it is a service that the police ought to to pay for, either them or the police and crime commissioners. And I say this because, you know, it's a no-brainer. When the police need cars, squad cars, to catch criminals, 
They don't go to Ford Motor Company and say, please could you donate us a car. <laughs> they buy the car because it's a car which enables them to provide the quality service the public want and the public are paying for. And in precisely the same way, if this service works, and we believe it will, then when it works, it's a service that the police should pay for. And there's a real important point here. It is not just about money. I believe one of the reasons that the Met are ambivalent about this is because they don't own it. They don't control it. This is the first independent community initiative in our great city for something like, certainly in my life, of people saying, we want to help the police. We're not attacking the police, we want to help the police. Even though it's coming, and they accept it's coming with goodwill, with good heart, that it's well built, they are ambivalent, and that ambivalence is because they don't own or control it. And from the work I did in my previous organisation, uh, both in private companies and in public bodies, that if a valuable service is provided for free to the organisation, it tends not to value it very highly. If it's asked to pay a reasonable rate for it, then that is drawn to the attention of the senior people, the budget holders. They start investing their time in it and they feel some ownership for it. So this principle about it being a paid for service is important not just to ensure that it exists, but actually <coughs> to ensure there is a sense of ownership within the Metro and Police Force and Police Forces elsewhere in the country. Thank you. Um, I am just speaking as a grandmother. I wonder whether you're able to send publicity about all this to the schools. I have a grandson aged 11 who was attacked for his mobile phone and his friend ran away and he dropped it and that was that. They didn't report it to the police or anybody else because one had no, it wasn't serious enough to go to the police. And I wonder if the schools gave some publicity to all this to their kids, that that might help. Well, that's a very good suggestion, and uh, certainly we'll be very happy to try and do that. And if anyone can help, again, we've said we've asked uh, members of the public, uh, use the site, whether you're a victim or witness or a concerned member of the public, tell 10 people about the service, and please tell your school. We, uh, we will be making available on our site um, a, uh, um, the, the material that we've used in uh, talking to uh, young children about street violence, and that will be something, a good way, not just to help the children get more confidence, and, but it will also enable them to find out about this service and use it. Can I just ask a question? It's, it's really a point of information. My name's Caroline Wright, I'm a judge, and I work in the criminal justice system at times. Um, how much information do the police get from the site? For example, when I see witnesses coming in, they're asked about their first report, when it was, what was the content, and all that sort of thing comes out when I'm hearing witnesses. And, and just as a point of information, I'd like to know how much goes to the police from the site so they understand what the part that this plays in the pattern that, of their investigation. Thank you very much. Um, uh, th these are all brilliant questions, and they're making me realise that uh, my and my little speech uh, didn't cover all the, all the main bases. Um, what the site is, is about facilitating communication between victims and witnesses and the police. So for instance, the example, Dom, if you just go on uh, one of these posts and contact the police, that if the witness is able to help, either have photographic evidence or uh, has some, and puts this information in here, we at Witness Confidence never see, we cannot see that information. So if someone uh, even issued a, a court order 
and said we had to show them we don't have that information. That information goes directly and uniquely from this site to the police. It is only the police have it and the witness who has replied. And that is the correct way it should be. <coughs> so that what happens is any post that goes on the site, either of a reported incident or of a, an alert, so a warning, that that, when the victim or witness, they get a chance to look at the post again before it goes on the site, then they validate it. They have to validate it, which is a safety to make sure it's not being abused. And then it appears on the site, and at that same moment, an email arrives at the local safe and neighbourhood team with the details of the post, where it is, with the contact details from the victim or witness, and then asking the safe and neighbourhood team to pass that to the appropriate investigative force. So that this is all very simple, simple on the record, no red tape, not a whole bunch of paperwork. This is efficiency. I just I want to say very much to Norbury Governor. Um, I think the sooner we can get more police resources, the better it will be. My three sons have either been attacked or been witnesses to attacks, and I live in leafy um, Kingston. So they've all suffered that. As soon as they got an understanding, the police were going to take them seriously, they would probably overcome their deep antipathy to any contact with police in London. So anything that can be done to encourage the police to help get this on their mobile phones or do anything like that can only help to restore a <coughs> civilised society. Uh, look, I'm very grateful. I'm going to repeat some of these because this is being live streamed and I'm not sure whether the mic picks that up. That's a, a gentleman from the bank who's a Londoner who lives in a leafy part in Kingston. He has three children. All of them have been attacked or witnesses to street violence. And he's saying that there is an antipathy that uh, youths today have to deal with the police and how important this sort of initiative is to overcome that, to demonstrate to the youths and, and to everybody that the police are willing to help, are able to help and will take these matters seriously. And his final <coughs> words are that we do need to get the police to endorse this procedure, to endorse this service, and it is the only way that we can get back the semblance of a civilised society that everybody in London, and I've got to emphasise this, some people, there's a, there's a quote we have, can I just go back to the, the, the supporting pages, um, which is, can we just go down? This is uh, not from London, this is a, a woman who's had a serious problems of, of her own, and someone who, like many victims, who turn this to advantage and turn it to good. And she works with gangs in the West Midlands. And she says, from our work with young people in and around gangs, I welcome the service and hope it will soon come to the West Midlands. The thing I know only too well from my work is that everybody fears violence in their community and too many feel powerless to do anything about it. We have to change that. We have to change that. And so when you talk about a semblance of a civilised society, it is by giving people a sense, uh, uh, the ability to overcome their frustration, to feel they can do something about it, to do something securely, to be a good citizen, to be a good neighbour. If we can do those things, we will be making progress. But we cannot do it unless the police will participate. Any more? I think if we've got, if we've got no more questions, are, are there still refreshments downstairs? I think so. I think we've got some more refreshments downstairs, so we can all just wake up, go down there, and uh, I'm sure there's some one to one if anyone wants it. Can I say just once again, thanks for coming along to this. It's you know it's been two years of hard work, and uh, I really believe we've got something that's going to make a difference, and um, hopefully we'll show that within the next year. Thanks very much.